Silo Season 1 ended with many intriguing loose ends, but there's a theory that could prove that the characters' origins are tied to the art of cloning. Part of Silo's appeal comes from being kept in the dark regarding the inner workings of the society's political structure as well as the history of its inhabitants, and Season 2 could shed some light on some of these topics. While there has already been a version of events offered to explain why so little is known about Juliet's more recent ancestry, it may not tell the whole story about the world of Silo. Silo is set on a post-apocalyptic earth where humanity has been preserved in small, indoor societies that are advised to remain there due to hazardous atmospheric conditions. Once a request has been made to leave the Silo, it can't be retracted, and the person in question is banished while the rest of the structure's residents watch. For every answer that's provided in Silo Season 1, more pop up in its place. One of the burning questions still lingering is how the surviving members of the human race came to be in the silos, but Silo Season 2 could finally explain. Silo Season 2 could reveal the other silos started with the same initial inhabitants. Juliet and the others could still be unique despite descending from clones. The Silo Season 1 ending revealed that the silo that had served as the setting for the entire show wasn't the only one of its kind. One of the most interesting shots of the show's finale, Silo Season 1, Episode 10, Outside, shows an aerial view of a barren earth with entrances to countless other silos. The discovery shocks both Rebecca Ferguson's Juliet Nichols and the audience, as up until that moment, it was incorrectly assumed that Juliet's silo was the only one of its kind. While the interior of the other structures isn't shown in Silo Season 1, it could be that all of their inhabitants descended from the same batch of clones that were duplicated and placed in these new silos in an effort to preserve the human race. The earth is shown to be unsuitable for habitation outside the silos, as shown by the requirement of a special suit by those who are sent out to clean. So, whoever built the silos may have only had limited genetic material to hand, possibly even their own, when populating their creations with clones. However, at least 140 have passed in the main silo since the rebellion. This was a period of unrest and presumably violence that erased all the silo's previous history, making it unclear how long the society has actually been there. Regardless, even 140 years is far beyond a human lifespan, so the characters in Silo Season 1 would only be descendants of the original batch of clones. As such, Several generations could have passed since the colony was established. The silo clone theory could allow for the return of certain cast members. Cloning allows for silo actors to return as new characters. Rashida Jones as Alison Becker and David Oilo as Holston Becker smiling in Silo 101. Although unlikely, it's still possible that the same or similar genetic combinations could be made in more than one of the silos. For example, if a pair of the original clones coupled off and had a child in one silo, then the same two clones in a different silo may also create the same child. Although there would undoubtedly be significant genetic variations as these parallel family trees progressed, the genetic quirks could still allow for the return of members of the silo cast whose characters died in Silo Season 1. For example, Holston and Alison Becker both died in Silo Season 1 but they could have counterparts in another silo who look similar or even identical to them. This would allow David Oilo to return to the show to play a mind-bending genetic sibling of Holston Becker who was born in another silo and possibly under a different name. The same is also true of Rashida Jones, who could come back and play a version of Alison Becker. The other silo clone societies could be different from the main one. Silo Season 2 could feature other societies with key similarities and differences. Rebecca Ferguson as Juliet Nichols in Silo If the interior of every silo is identical, and all started off the same batch of clones, then it's likely that each community develops similarly. However, this isn't necessarily the case. For example, Juliet's silo could have been the only one to have experienced a rebellion which would mean it progressed much differently from its newly discovered counterparts. 
The sheer number of genetic combinations that can occur during procreation could also mean that only the society's initial clone figures in the silos are the same and that each following generation was unique to each version of the same community.